The EMKV-90 tall rail tanks are an absolute dominant anti-vehicle force. They are capable of easily beating any other ground vehicle in the game in a one-on-one -on -one fight. On top of that, they can also be an effective anti-air tool. I've been spending a lot of sessions in these vehicles and I wanted to let you know how you can most effectively use these. Above all, I want to show you how good these can be when you aren't just camping in them. Before you start, if you haven't already watched my main battle tanks video, I would start there, as a lot of the information there is very relevant to the tall rail tanks, and I don't plan on reiterating it here. Tor's main weapon is the railgun. This weapon is one of, if not the fastest vehicle projectiles in the game, feeling like it's almost hit scan. Despite DICE saying that the Tor isn't a vehicle about sniping from afar, it excels at medium to long ranges even after its recent damage nerfs to far engagements. At short range fighting, you'll see the weakness of the Tor become much more significant. You see the Tor railgun has a charge of time before your shot launches. When you're charging your shot, your aim sensitivity becomes dramatically lower. While micro adjustments in your aim are still possible, any significant movements from the target can make your shot miss. Additionally, these tanks have two modes, Mobility Mode and Siege Mode. Mobility Mode is your usual mode. Siege Mode on the other hand reduces the vehicle's movement speed and acceleration in order to reduce the charge time of your rail rounds. Think of this as the mode that you want to choose when you want to hold your ground and output maximum damage. And Mobility Mode is what you want to be using when you're moving around. Who would have guessed? A big thing to consider is that changing modes will make you unable to move your vehicle for around 3 seconds while the tank adjusts its stance. Honestly, even though siege mode sounds awesome, it does leave you very vulnerable and as such I rarely use it. And considering that C5 is your biggest threat, losing that mobility is a massive downside. I would only recommend deploying this if you're absolutely sure that you're safe from C5, you know you want to be in this position for a significant amount of time, or if you get the jump on multiple vehicles which you want to tear through with maximum efficiency. There are two choices of railgun rounds. The hammer rounds are the real equivalent of empath shells, dealing roughly the same amount of damage against ground vehicles. However, unlike empath shells which deal an equivalent amount of damage at any range, the hammer rounds and rail rounds in general are subject to damage drop off at further ranges. You might conclude that you're just strictly better with the main battle tank's empath shells, but the rail rounds have a key feature which means in a 1v1 fight you have the advantage over main battle tanks. You see the rail rounds are not affected by the active protection countermeasure. There are lots of players who don't know this. If you frequently play around with the tours, you'll see enemy main battle tanks engage you, and they'll waste their APS mid-fight hoping to prevent some of your rounds. Additionally, since the tall rail rounds fly completely straight with no drop, hitting the target at range is much easier than with an empath shell, which needs to account for gravity. Hammer rounds are incapable of one-shotting aircraft at any range, and they have a shot charge time of around 1 second which can be reduced to 0.45 seconds when in siege mode. They also have a replenish speed time of 6.8 seconds. Your other choice of rail round is the mole round. The mole round are what you take if you want to inflict maximum damage. Compared to the hammer rounds, they have a longer charge speed, increased to 1.3 seconds in mobility mode and roughly 0.6 seconds in siege mode. Comparatively, mole rounds also have a medium turret turn speed instead of a fast turn speed, and the round replenishment speed is much longer, 15 seconds in fact. This last point is quite significant if you plan on chilling in siege mode since you'll find yourself being unable to shoot your main gun because you're waiting for your rounds to come back. Definitely a bad situation to be in if an enemy tank rolls up on you. The damage output on these rounds is really high and you're capable of destroying a main battle tank in 3 shots, provided that you're close enough for maximum damage and that you're hitting the top or side armour. You're also capable of one-shotting nightbirds, jets and stealths that are less than 330 metres from you, and attack choppers that are less than 280 meters from you. Both rounds are great, but for the same reason I recommend the RPG over the M5, I think the mole rounds are better than the hammer rounds. More damage faster helps you get kills faster and catches players off guard. 
Simply put, killing them in fewer shots prevents them from running away. Additionally, I find the one-shot potential in aircraft to be very useful, since if you hit them and don't kill them, they can get away, heal up, and then get on top of you. On the point of hitting aircraft, since the barrel has limited vertical range of movement, you're usually only able to hit them if they're far away or flying really low. To give you a bit more aim height, you can and should be sure to find some uneven ground angled up towards your target. This will obviously let you aim your turret higher into the sky. In terms of secondary weapons, I've discussed most of them in my main battle tank guide, all except for the coaxial canister shot, which is the equivalent to putting an auto shotty on a tank. This thing is amazing and I strongly recommend it. It easily dispatches infantry in one shot up close, and even if they're too far for a single canister to kill them, you can just spam it since it fires and replenishes so fast. Nope, now it is. I would say that it's unusable at far ranges, but even then you can still give it a try and occasionally you'll get random headshot kills. It's also perfect for nailing those annoying C5 suiciders or peaking engineers. It's also very effective against aircraft and light armoured vehicles, which get too close. I think this is the perfect complement to pair with your long range main gun. Okay. For countermeasures, just like with the main battle tanks, you have to go for thermal smoke and APS. You also have the threat detection system, which essentially wall hacks anything that damages your tank for roughly 3.3 seconds. This is perfect for letting you know where that Boris is camping so you can nail him with your canister shot. For your passenger seat, you have the 12.7mm heavy machine gun, the 7.62mm light machine gun, the 7.62 minigun, the 40mm grenade launcher, and the 20mm canister shot, all of which I've covered in my passenger guide. I personally recommend using the 20mm canister as it gives you more close range outputs for shutting down C5ers and also a pretty good deterrent for choppers which get on top of you. The passenger seat also has access to the EMP grenade. I did cover this in my guide but DICE changed how EMP works so let's quickly discuss this. Previously EMP used to disable weapons and access to countermeasures but with a recent update it no longer does this. Now it puts the vehicle into a damaged state. This hinders their movement and turret speed, making it harder for vehicles inflicted to get around and fight back. This state goes away by itself after a few seconds, or immediately if the vehicle uses its repair function, which just as a reminder, it can do immediately if the vehicle is equipped with it. Before the change when EMP would disable weapons, I would recommend that you seat swap to this whenever you get into a vehicle fight to completely shut down your opponent. But now it's kind of situational, and it depends on what vehicle you're fighting against and whether you think it has the repair function equipped. If it's a main battle tank that's close and trying to outmaneuver you, then it's definitely worth it, because it's unlikely that they have repair equipped, since APS is the more popular option, and the EMP effect on this vehicle slows them to a stop, hence making them very easy targets for your tall cannon. Against something like a Wildcat, which definitely has repair equipped, don't waste your time. In fact, in most cases, seat swapping to use the EMP is just no longer worth it. Don't get me wrong, it's good if you have a gunner who is using it, but as the driver you likely don't need to depend on it. Finally, to close us out, a few tips for the tow tank. You should get into the habit of pre-charging rounds and only firing when you know you will get the hit. You can think of this as similar to winding up the minigun warming up your weapons so that as soon as you get the target in sight you can lay a rail round into them. The only downside is obviously the horrendous headache that you'll get from the charging noise. This is especially good for lining up those shots against aircraft, since predicting where they will be can be difficult, and you don't want to waste the shot with a miss. Fun fact, the tall rail tanks don't have front armour, they take side damage no matter where you hit them in the front. So feel free to completely angle your tall vehicle to allow enemy side hits if it grants you a significant escape benefit, since you'll not be losing anything here. They do however have rear armour weakness, so avoid revealing your sensitive behind to the enemy. Your hardest fights are going to be against enemy tolls. Usually whoever gets the first shot off will win, 
but there are still some things you can do to clutch victory from an unadvantageous position. If you can retreat and heal up, that should be your first plan of action, but sometimes if the enemy is pushing you, that isn't always an option. If you are forced into the engagement, then you need to keep moving and try to get close trying to cause the enemy to miss their shots. Moving sporadically, stopping, starting, reversing, anything to make your predicted location difficult for the enemy to anticipate. Tor cannons can get really hard to aim up close, and your final location needs to be predicted by the enemy. If you can avoid a few rounds, all while hitting your own, you can quickly turn the tides of the fight. If you have an enemy chopper on top of you, it's really difficult to survive. With your limited vertical aim on the main cannon, the only way you can win is if they get too low. If they do get too low, don't waste your time with the hammer or maul rounds, since you'll likely never get the charge shot off before they're out of your sights. Instead, I recommend using the coaxial canister to tear through them. Up close, this does massive damage and can quickly make them think twice about committing to kill you, or in the best case, straight up blow them out of the sky. Consider swapping to the 20mm canister seat and using that since it'll allow you to aim much higher. Additionally, if they're using ATGMs, use a combination of your thermal smoke and APS in order to only allow a short window for them to damage you. In both cases, wait until they fire their missiles, use the thermal smoke for the first missile and the APS for the second. Then they'll have to wait for their missiles to replenish. In the meantime, you can move around to either find a friendly wildcat to help out, a tunnel or building to hide in, or baiting them into flying so low that you can get some shots in. The days of one-shotting aircraft from the safety of your spawn are long gone, and good riddance. Camping in the tour is wasting the vehicle, since even if you're able to hit your shots, the damage at these longer ranges is massively reduced, meaning that you won't be able to kill in the same amount of rounds. This reduced damage also means that your enemy can move to behind cover, where they will likely avoid your sight lines and find another objective to push. Don't be a coward. Use the vehicle to support infantry playing the objective, getting into the thick of it and ruining enemy armor. Now I hope I've made my case to all the players who just sit around in these vehicles camping the backline. The toy is amazing when it's being used to hunt enemy vehicles, rather than to just sit predictably in the spawn while enemy players just avoid your line of sight. Try these tips out on the battlefield and let me know how it goes in the comments. We're getting close to 5,000 subscribers, which is just insane. So I really appreciate your support with these videos. It takes a lot of time to make them and I massively want to thank all of you for your patience. I hope to see you on the battlefield and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take care. Here's Johnny! <laughs>